Hi, I'm Leonie West from Westerly Design and this video we will show you how to use our rope templates. Regardless of what size of rope you are using, they are all worked in the same manner. On the template we have lines marked across here. These lines are a reference line so that we can line up with the edge of a border or a line marked on a quilt and use that as a point to sew it to. My border is two and a half inches, my template is one and a half inches, so I will half have a half inch space on either edge when I've sewn this rope. On the rope we also have the pattern that we are sewing marked into the template. So once we've sewn one, we can move the template across and make sure it lines up with the stitching line from before. The template's marked with A, B, A1 and B1. These are reference points that, that we will use. We're going to sew from A all the way around to B. We're going to backtrack to B1 and at this point we will move the template across. When we move the template across, B goes to B1 and we'll sew it again all the way up to A. And now we're just going to be sewing to here because we've already sewn this line, moving the template across again. This time we'll sew all the way around to B, backtrack. And it's just a matter of going from one to the other. I've brought my threads up at A. My line here is in line with the reference line or the border seam line. And we're going to sew around. The first one we sew, we can actually sew the whole way around and complete the full shape of the rope. Or we can come down here and stop here and move across. For this one I will show you all the way around showing you the complete wreath being sewn. I'm going to stop here at A. Now I'm going to sew across to A1 which is over here. There is a line marked pointing with a little arrow. That line is where we want our needle to stop in line with. So we sew until the needle is in line with that arrow on A1. We will now move the template across, making sure that the bottom is lined up. We're also looking to see how our pattern lines up here. I'm just sitting a little bit high, which means if I do probably one little stitch there, now my pattern is lined up with the stitch line from before. So if I move that across, you can see that stitch line. Line that up so it's in place, making sure that the bottom line is, in, is straight again. This time we're going to sew all the way round to B. So we're going to go around, come around here, up to B, stop. I'm now going to backtrack from B to B1. And all the wreaths work in, um, all the ropes work in the same manner. I've turned around the fabric and taken the template away. So you can see this is the first one we sewed we travelled across backtracking, doing a second row of stitching and then we moved the template over. We sewed around and down to here and we backtracked up to here. Because we have the key in our template, very easy to put the template back in place. That's great when we want to change from one template to another. I'm now going to bring that back around and I'll sew some more for you. So I've got the template back in place, my line is in line down here the important part and we're just going to go around sewing from B all the way up to A, backtrack across to A1, stop at A1, move the template across, make sure it's in line, make sure our base is in line and just keep going. It's really easy to sew a rope. You can do borders, you can run these around blocks. It's a matter of just moving A to B, B1, keeping that baseline in place, checking and make sure that the stitching line is in the correct position. And back to A1. Stop here, move the template, 
line it up, make sure our base is in place. If you stopped a little bit far, just do a half stitch back up. If you need another stitch to make sure you're, sure you're in the correct position, just do one more stitch and back to B1. Stopping there, move the template across. That's our rope completed. In the instructions we do show you how to get round a corner by just with diagrams that show you different ways to go around a corner. If you're running on a sashing, you don't have to worry about corners. If it's on a border, then you might need to get around a corner. So one of the easiest ways to do it is instead of quilting this the whole way across the quilt, go halfway and have the, te the rope so it runs this angle on one half of that border and then going on the other angle for the other border. Start at the corner of the border and that way these pieces will meet quite easily going around there. Or leave a space when you come to a corner. Then that corner can be treated with a finial. Put something special, a spin effects in there so that the corners have their own detail. If the corner runs this way, this would be a 45 degree line, that gives us one angle that we can work on. And if it is running the other way, our 40 degree line will be going from here and across. And then we will get a space in here. So it's up to you to choose which method you like to get around the corners. The other thing these templates have is there is a border that is made to match our rope. So I'm just going to put a border across here. The template's been marked with lines. Those lines mark, match our crossovers in our rope. So if we line the lines up along here with those crossover points, then our border matches our rope. So this is an echo. So bring our threads up, line those up, and now we can sew the echo. Because our template is lining up across the top and touching these top peaks, it's going to be a quarter inch echo. When we get to here, I usually stop before I get to the end because it's easier. Make sure that that's lining up. There's always movement in our quilts. We, our quilting shrinks our quilts. So as we're doing this, we might discover there is a bit of movement from where my line's coming through here. And I may just need to move it a millimetre over. The best time to move it is when it's lined up, when the foot is sitting at the top of the template. Because if the foot is sitting here, <coughs> you will not notice if I moved it a millimetre or two. But if you try to move it in this bottom part, when the foot is sitting down in here, you're going to see where that was moved from. So we just move it along, keeping those lines in place. And that's our echo zone. So I'm just going to stop here. So that's our continuous rope zone here with our echo on it. And we can echo that quarter inch two or three times for an, to give more depth to that. You might have the one and a half inch wide template and a three inch wide border instead of two and a half. And you might want to bring these echoes out to that edge of the borderline. So I hope you enjoyed that video showing you how to use a rope.